Luckily, it's rare for programmers to be asked interview questions like, tell me about a time you were under a lot of pressure, or have you ever made a mistake and how did you handle it? Getting a programming job is much more about nailing the technical interview. Your ability to write good code is the most important component of landing that job offer. So what do companies typically ask about in a technical interview? Not all companies have the same interviewing process, but for the most part, you can expect to see questions covering data structures and algorithms. These two themes are by far the most common for coding interviews, so you'll want to make sure you master a variety of these questions before you interview. What's up? It's Kalen from Kite, the AI coding assistant that helps you code faster and smarter. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick five minute coding interview bootcamp covering some basic algorithms you should know how to do in Python. This is the second video in a series covering the foundational skills that will help you nail your next technical interview. In a prior video, we covered the most useful data structures for coding interviews and when it's best to use each of them. I highly recommend checking that video out if you haven't already. Click the link up top or in the description below to get up to speed on data structures fast. All right, let's dive into algorithms for coding interviews. The first algorithms we'll cover are sorting algorithms. Sorting algorithms are the bread and butter of coding interview questions, and they are absolutely worth practicing to ace your coding interview. There are five very common sorting algorithms you could be asked about. Selection sort, insertion sort, bubble sort, merge sort, and quick sort. For this portion of the video, I will dive into selection sort, but I'll leave resources on the other algorithms in the description below. Selection sort works by continuously finding the smallest value and moving it to the beginning of the list. It does this by splitting the list into a sorted and unsorted section and continuously adding the sorted section until all of it is sorted. We can implement this using two for loops. The first one iterating through the whole list and the second one iterating from the unsorted half of the list. We'll also need to keep track of the index for the minimum values so we can move it to the sorted side. If we find an element with a smaller value than the current smallest value, we'll set this new index to be the minimum value. Then, after comparing all the values in the second for loop, we swap the smallest element we found with the first element. We can do this in one line with a double assignment. Let's print this list before and after the selection sort, and then run it in the command prompt. We'll also need to call selection sort on the list on line 1. Great, but not exactly perfect. As you may have been able to tell, this algorithm can be pretty slow in its worst case scenario, running a total of n squared operations for a list of size n. There are plenty of other algorithms that can run significantly faster, like merge sort, and so employers could ask you to code something that works even faster than this. I suggest checking out bigosheet.com for more outlines of runtime with big O notation. The link is in the description below. Since this is only a five minute bootcamp, I'll encourage you to use the resources like this to learn more about algorithms before you dive into your interview. And next, before we cover search algorithms, I wanna take a moment to tell you more about Kite, which you can use to code faster. If you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. Search algorithms are the solution to a common pool of problems that you'll see in a coding interview. In short, a search algorithm is responsible for finding some type of data stored within a data structure. This could be a number in a list, a node in a tree, a destination on a map, a point in a 2D array, or any other data structure that you could think of. Let's start off with a basic search called the binary search. As you may have guessed from the name, this algorithm divides the list in half until the specified value is found. However, this means that the list has to be sorted. Good thing we just learned how to do that. So there are two ways to do a binary search, iteratively and recursively. For this video, I'll focus on the iterative version, but the recursive version is easy to derive from it. Let's define the function and provide two parameters, the list and the value we want to find. We need to define the edges of the list if we want to cut it in half at some point. So we'll make variables for the left and the right side. Now let's create a while loop to iterate through the list. This won't be an ordinary while loop with a counter. Instead, we'll be checking that the left edge has not intersection with the right edge. If it has, then the list was cut in half too many times and the value was not found. Now let's create the midpoint, which is the right edge minus one over two plus the left edge. Note that we need to use the two slashes to keep the numbers whole. We'll want to check if the desired value is in the middle. If it is, we'll return that index. 
If it is not in the middle, we can check if the value is located on the left or the right side of the middle and adjust the bounds accordingly. If the value is greater than the middle, we know that our value is between the middle and the right edge, so we can adjust the left edge to be just past the middle. If the value is less than the middle, the value will be between the left edge and the middle, so we can adjust the right edge to be just before the middle. And that's all it takes. Let's run this on the list above and check the results. Fantastic! Compared to a normal search, binary search takes log 2n for a list of size n. To make this method recursive, change the assignment of the right and left edges to be parameters, change the while loop to an if statement, and change the assignments of the left edge and right edge to call binary search with adjusted values. This works just like the last way. Finally, let's go over depth first and breadth first searches on graphs. A depth-first search, or DFS, is where all possible branches on a tree or graph are searched downward before backtracking. A breadth-first search, or BFS, is the opposite. So it's where it'll explore branches, breadth, or sides instead of diving downwards. Let's start off by showing how to implement DFS. For a graph, we'll use a dictionary with the names of nodes as keys and the set of neighbors for its value. We'll need to keep track of the nodes we've seen already, as well as the nodes on our frontier that we need to evaluate. We'll create a set for the visited nodes and a stack or list for the nodes on the frontier. It's important to note that DFS and BFS vary in their frontier data structure. DFS uses a stack, which follows LIFO, or last in, first out, for exploring its nodes. And BFS uses a queue, which follows FIFO, or first in, first out, for exploring its nodes. Now, we create a while loop checking that the stack is not empty. We'll then take a node off the stack by popping it using the pop method. With this node, we need to check if it is already explored. We could also check for a goal node here, but for now let's stick to a search to show how each algorithm performs differently. If it isn't, we'll update the explored set with the node and print it. We'll also add this node's neighbors to the frontier. We can do this by adding the node's value set using the extend method. We can then subtract the nodes that have already been explored, and Python makes this easy through a simple subtraction sign. Since we were not searching for a node, we'll simply return. When we run this, we should see the nodes print out in a particular order due to the behavior of the stack. To turn this to a BFS, all we need to do is change the data structure to a queue, and that means changing the way the values are popped. When we call pop, we now must provide an index 0 to get the node that's been in the queue the longest. When we push to the queue, we're going to use the extend method still, but now the nodes are popped out in FIFO order. Let's run this BFS and see how its node exploration varied from the DFS. As you can see, it matches the order from the diagram. And that's all for this 5-minute code interview bootcamp. Hopefully through watching this, you feel much more prepared for that upcoming interview. But be sure to get in as much practice as possible. There are so many different algorithm questions they can throw at you, and you never know when they could twist a question that uses an algorithm you think you know well. And that's why you should subscribe to our channel right now. Click that subscribe button and ring the bell. We're releasing more coding interview tips and tricks each week that you will not want to miss. Plus, we'll be serving up other helpful videos about Python and software development that in general you'll find interesting. Finally, don't forget to download Kite now for free to start coding faster. The link is in the description below. Happy coding, and we'll see you in the next video.